Are you telling me the inspector did not point this out? No, Sandy no. found it. Sandy found, found it in here cleaning. cleaning. Grab Kayla and go upstairs. We have to seal this off. We, we can't be down here. You knew the age in the home. He circled the possibility. I'm absolutely livid. It's, uh, it's the nightmare of a house, right? First thing I tell you, have this checked. David and Sandy fell in love with this house as soon as they saw it. Imagine a ravine in the backyard, completely renovated. They brought in a home inspector, a reputable firm that took a good look at the house and actually gave them two thumbs up. It was Sandy that walked into the basement and found something that scared her badly. I'm going to find out what that was, and I'll make it right. We started looking for homes in the West End, um, closer to work, and we lost a whole bunch of bidding wars. We bid it on seven houses, and it was the peak market. So when we found this house, we thought, you know what, it's, it's higher than we wanted to spend, but it had everything. It's a detached home with um, parking and a garage, three bedrooms upstairs with a bathroom. We have um, a formal living room, dining room, but it's a very open concept, so it lots, it's lots of light and uh, lots of flow. We also have a great sunroom in the back, which is now a, a playroom, and then downstairs is a completely finished basement, and it's fantastic. It's a place for us to relax, to chill, to watch some TV, to play with our son, to host friends, and just to kind of just unwind. When we went to this tier, I guess you could call it, in terms of homes, we definitely uh, took the building inspection extremely seriously. Like, we went through it uh, quite closely. We, we asked a lot of questions, and, uh, you know, we made sure we felt very comfortable moving forward because there just isn't that buffer no. of a bank account ready to spend thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 to fix the home. Sandy. I am I'm Mike. Nice to Mike. meet you. Pleasure to find you. David. I'm Dave. Pleasure to meet you both. How are you doing today? Very well. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. We well, use the basement as our family room. It's a playroom, family room, computer room, and really, it's the place that we spend most of our time aside from the kitchen. Well, come on down to the basement. So nice. I was downstairs cool. just cleaning up in the furnace room and just, you know, tidying away. And I, I looked at the pipes and thought, oh, isn't that great that, you know, it's, it's nice and clean, but I think I'm probably losing a lot of heat. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to, to wrap the pipes. And as I was following the pipes, I realized into the bulkhead, it, it, there was an area that was exposed um, and it looked like it was asbestos. That is definitely asbestos. Definitely. Alarm bells rang, and I remember, you know, yelling to Dave, saying, "Grab Kayla, let's go upstairs. We have to seal this off. We we can't be down here." In a lot of the older homes that had rats, they used to wrap the pipes with asbestos. This was a source of insulation and kept it warm. As soon as we look at this, we can say this is a wrap around the pipe. In the base of the age of the home, odds are it's asbestos. Okay, odds are. But I, since I I can't really tell, it needs to be checked. You got to have it checked, and that'd be the first thing I'd tell you: have this checked. And I'd raise it as a huge question mark. Is this asbestos? <laughs> it does, it's, it's not a good feeling. It really isn't. The way that, you know, her heart was racing and, and basically, you know, stop, you know, the, the kid and myself are not going downstairs. He knew the age in the home. He circled the possibility, but he did not point it out and he did not talk to you about it. That's the fault. The home inspector, it's really simple. They have the paper, they have a book. It's time saving to walk through the house and really circle. Here's what I saw, here's what it looks like, how to fix it, possible money issues. So he's not wasting his time and coming through the house and then going home and rewriting it up. It's on the spot. The problem that I see with this is it's too generic. It's the same for every other house. It's the same circles, the foundation is cinder block, uh, cracked mortar. Uh, should be inspected. You know, so that the whole thing is so generic like that that if you look at tons and tons of home inspection reports, you're going to read the same things. What I want to hear is, look, it's in front of my eyes. I think this is asbestos. I think you should bring someone in. I think you maybe want to be a little concerned. Asbestos is not scary unless you touch it that one time. Yes, that asbestos wrap was over these pipes, right to the, all the pipes were covered. So somebody pulled this section off. If you call in the right people, they're going to remove it all, which should have been done in the first place. Here's the problem. 
These pipes run this way to the front of the house. These pipes run right to the back of the house. What does that mean? The whole it's basement everywhere. needs to be torn apart. Until we find it all. I'm angry. Asbestos poses a lot of long-term health risks. Some of them are uncharted still. Um, I know that if you're recently exposed to it, you probably won't die from it, but it could cause asthma. There's a whole range of health issues that we're very concerned about, especially again for our son. If you knew there was asbestos in this house, would you have bought the house? No, Why? not at all. We have a 20 month old. We, when we moved in, he was only six months old and we had saw tons of homes with asbestos. And every single time we said, oh, we're not touching that. We know it's dangerous. It's bad for your health. We're walking away. Ah, oh, I'm so scared now. Don't be, don't be oh. afraid. It's not, it's. I'm just so angry. The issue is, was this? Don't even touch it. No, it, it was. You can't. You don't want to touch anything to do with this because you don't know. You know, you don't put this kind of money in the house without taking that crap out. They took it out here. You should have took that out too. That is definitely asbestos. Once this is touched, we need to control it 100%. The home inspector circled it to say, FYI, may be here, but certainly did not point that out. And I certainly would not have been cleaning this room had I known that I was exposing myself to asbestos. So this is our... Oh, I hate it when I do this. We had a contractor and he was uh, inspecting a few things. I think one of them being the wire and checking the electrical box. And he said that your, your main water pipe is way too close to your electrical panel. He says, I'm not an electrician, but you really need to look into this. Just sweating or whatever the case would be, it's not right. good. A handyman told you this, I like this guy. Yes. He's right. <laughs> water and electricity don't mix. No. So he <laughs> said either you can redirect it or put some type of a spray insulation and see if you can stop the sweating. He's right, if those pipes sweat, and they will, it will drip in an electrical pan. But there's another problem. What's wrong with this room? It's freezing cold. Why? There's uh, no insulation. No heat? No heat. No nothing. nothing, it's a freezing cold room. There's your floor joists that mount out over your structure. You see your brick? Yes. So you insulated this to keep it from condensating. Right. What you probably did was saved it from bursting. So we do have a crack in the ceiling right here. Yes. Do you have a bathroom above this? We do. We do. That's exactly right where this is. That is definitely a water leak. Oh, that's not good. That's definitely a water leak. So as soon as I ask you, is there a bathroom above, I know it's a water leak. Because if you look close enough, you're going to see that this is where the joint of the sheeting. Right here, there's a joint, right? And on that joint, water has actually deteriorated to the point where it's now coming through, and it makes the paper very weak. The only thing you're not seeing is a real stain yet. So it's a very slow drip, whatever it is. It's an uh, older home, eh? Yes, it is. Nice. You know, the older homes are very charming until we, the uh, new contractors of the world, screw it up by doing renovations that are wrong. Somebody's taken out the downspout. Is that you? No, it was like that when we moved in. Well, this is an area that water could leak into the foundation. So any leaks at all on the side of the house here? Yes, actually, um, just around the front here, right right by our cold room, we've noticed that there's some water seeping through the window now. Through the window? I don't think it's through your window. I think it's actually, you see the grating of the concrete? It's running down yes. this way, right? So coming right to the corner here where we have a vertical weeper that the downspout used to tie into. Uh, okay. So that will just grab the water and bring it down. These are things that need to be scoped if we know there's an issue, and I always recommend it on an older house, which I did not read in the report. So we have a small addition on the back. Yes, but we've noticed that it's also leaked in the past as well, too. All right, the inspector noted that the grading issues and the downspouts empty out near the foundation. So this could be a leak area just like the front. No leakage at that point in the back of the house? No, just no. on this side. I would have guessed that for sure. Shop. This is enough for now. I'm going to get my tools. I'm going to go through this house with a fine tooth comb. And I'm going to show you what I found. Great. First thing I want to check for, actually, since I'm here, this is possible leak. It could be a minor drip. It could be a minor drip from the handles. There is no caulking around the tub faucet. It is loose. 
Now, it could be minor from here. It could be really from here. You see how we see the plastic come down and we're cracked at the edge? Water could be slowly seeping out, go down in. This is a very small leak. I'm actually gonna have to punch a hole in the ceiling and find out where it's coming from. I can guess, but until we see, it's not good enough. You know, I love this idea. We have the shower head and the ceiling. It's nice and big, and it's like rain falling on top of you. Problem is, is that water line comes off the tap and goes into the attic. That's not a good thing. We want that plumbing on the warm side. It's on the cold side, which means when I go up into the attic, I'm going to be checking that as well just to see what they did with it. This is an issue to me, but I did not read about this in the report. I do not want to cut this open. Since they've drywalled so close to this and, and they've disturbed it, there could be a bunch of particles on top, and I don't want to mess with it. I'm not going to send it through the air. I don't want to breathe it in. There's a lot of debris on top of that drywall, and they've actually disturbed this quite a bit. OK, that scares the living hell out of me. So I don't even have to punch a hole in the drywall. I don't want to punch a hole in the drywall. This tool just showed me it's from the front of the house to the back of the house. So that means that I don't want to put the spores in the air make it unsafe for my guys, for the family that's here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to move everything out. We're going to have the specialty guys come in. They're going to drape everything, and they're going to remove the drywall. Well, that might explain <laughs> why we're having water in there. Yeah. When I take you inside, you'll see the uh, well, the midpoint of the wall, the bottom part of the wall. Yeah. The driveway slopes this way. I'm still suspecting it's possible that the weepers, because yeah. they did take this out, they kicked it forward instead of actually sideways to go that way. Problem is, they'll still pick it up because it's cracked, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Diapers? <laughs> it's a sock. Oh, OK. Is that just to keep bugs out, or is that? Yeah, I'll uh... show you that from the inside. Is that actually hooked up, Holmes? No. There is foam and stucco. I like that. It's yeah. thermal broken. Uh, we have no vents whatsoever in the roof. I did not read about this in the report. It's a full basement. Yeah. I didn't catch it until today. The cinder block matches the existing house. We have water coming in. Approximately this point here, where the two walls meet, is coming in downstairs. Our job is to find out how it's coming in, how to stop it. I want to try and grade some of this down, because some of it runs back. I think it's coming in from the top. Is that concrete? Yeah, it's concrete. concrete. It's the old concrete there? porch. And it's supposed to rain tomorrow, Wednesday, and Friday. If you're here, I'll be here. Watch. I will. Fort. Find out where this water's coming from, where it goes, follow the path. Mm -hmm. I'm really believing that anything that comes down here is not penetrating here. I think it's from here. Let's wait for some rain and see what the hell happens. Waiting for rain again, OK. Well, the inside is actually quite nice. Oh, yeah. New renovations? This is, uh, oh, yeah. Pretty well, the whole place. So they said, we have a crack in our drywall. We're worried about the cracks. And yeah. they said, that's not a crack, that's a leak. Is there a bathroom above that? And they said, yes. OK, so we have a leak. Yeah. Punch a hole and then find out where it's leaking from. Good job for Carl. Bathrooms, it's nice. It's a new tub, nice yep. tile, kind of poor, a little bit oh, of yeah. work here where the plaster meets the tub. I don't think that's the leak. It's possible from the spout yeah. itself. Very it nice, It could though. be that it's splashing over and coming from the floor. Yep. However. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. The shower head. Plumbing in the attic. Plumbing's in the attic. So yeah. we need to confirm that they boxed that in in the attic. OK. And I have a feeling they didn't. We need to confirm it. OK. If they didn't, <laughs> I'll take care of it. So it looks really good. You know, they were able to really carry it all down the rails, the yeah. look. This used to be the laundry room, right here. Right here? Yeah. And the way okay. I can show you is. What do you see? There's the main. There's the panel. What else do I see? I see a copper line above a panel. Why is it insulated? They were trying to do that to stop condensation from dripping on the panel oh. because they saw it being wet. Yeah. Um, Did it work? Well, it kept it probably from freezing because yeah. there's no insulation in the voids at all. We have drilled oh, yeah. wires going out and everything, so let's make sure we spray foam. Yep. 
Uh, let's move that pipe, please. Let's get it to a better spot. Absolutely. Oh, an old vent. Remember the dryer vent on the outside yeah. of the house? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't so see that. Pull the dryer vent, spray foam the hole. All right, let's go to the adventure. <laughs> nice, we see the boiler. Yeah. Hot water heater, everything appears to be fine, and I'm looking at everything. Well, what do we know when we see a boiler in an old house? Uh, you tell me. What do we... Pipes? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. Don't tell me there's asbestos in here. Yeah. I did not touch it. I did not cut a hole because I did put my snake camera up. I looked this way, I looked that way, and it is just loaded with asbestos in oh, the bulkhead. Oh, man. You know, this is the area that's got all the asbestos, right? right? So I'm not touching this. My issue is, is if the asbestos continues to run from that bulkhead to this bulkhead to, uh, and dead ends here and they tie it upstairs, so I was gonna say leave everything in this room, but you might as well take it out anyways, okay. just in case, and have them protect everything. And let's take our time. Let's, you know, treat this house really nice, yep. good people. Take your time, enjoy it, smile. I will. Because we're gonna make them smile yep. once we fix all the problems. Absolutely. Okay? Okay. Any questions? I uh, don't think so. If I have anything, I'll call you. Got it all? Think so. Memory? Up here. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. You can leave asbestos-containing materials in your home undisturbed, yep. and they're entirely fine, but when you disturb it and they become airborne, then it becomes a hazard. Tab might come in and say that he has to rip our entire basement apart. It's crazy. You know, we learned lots, and I'm so thankful that you're here because we know that you're going to make it right, you're going to do it properly, and we're going to feel good about being able to live in our home again. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. It's the truth. I, I feel it, too, and I want to hug as well. Like, <laughs> short way. All right. It's a really light day for my crew today. I have to get every piece of furniture out of that basement so that the decontamination guys can actually do their job properly without having to move around and tarp stuff over. We had a bin coming. I want everything out. Everything to do with asbestos has, got, has to be removed and taken away before I'll let anyone back in this house. Make this a little easier on you guys. So bring it to there. Right here. It's definitely the heavier stuff. It ain't heavy. So you guys are almost done with the heavy stuff. Oh, wait, look what I found. Oh, there's a light one. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a dryer. Don't touch anything, guys. How's your back, MJ? I can't talk right now. <laughs> Come on, don't push. I'm oh, not. Hold it with your nose. Oh, you're really touch. Oh, shut up. Brian, how you doing? Good, how are you? Thank you very much for coming in. Yeah, you're welcome. You heard about our situation? Yes, I did, yeah. So they did a beautiful renovation in this place. Right. And then they go and bury asbestos. Now, what did they do? They took it off from this part and then buried the rest in bulkheads. That's what they did, yeah. This is all in bulkheads, and you can see it. It looks like it runs right from the back, to, or from the front to the back of the building. Yep. We're gonna have to build a closure around this. Yep. One can continue, it's gonna be a type three, because there's a chance that there could be asbestos debris sitting on top of the drywall. Right. So instead of having your people take down the drywall and we remove the asbestos, we're gonna set up an enclosure and, and then remove the asbestos inside the enclosure. We set up a telescopic shower. Yep. And so this is an area where guys come in, suit up, and then come in, go through the shower into the work area. When they leave, they come into a dirty room, a small dirty room yep. on this side, take off their suits and everything, and as they step into the shower, they remove their respirator shower, yep. then out in the street clothes, and right. we don't think there's any asbestos in this area, yep. in the ceiling, so we're gonna set up here. Okay. Yeah. This is the decontamination chamber. It looks a little bit like a scene out of E.T. or something, but uh, they've sealed everything off. They plastic the walls right up to where they're gonna actually work. They're trying to just create negative air pressure in here, which means they're controlling the airflow in this room. They seal it off, they tape the corner, so if there's any gaps, I mean, what they're trying to do is stop air from leaking out of this area and exposing the rest of the house to asbestos. 
Now we have the air filter machine. I call it the Sucker 3000, or I don't know what it is, but it's a, it's an airflow machine. It actually collects all the dust. What we have is we have a two filter system here. It stops debris, and the next one will stop actually any smaller spores that actually get out, and then suck the air right out of the house. There's no chance of any airborne asbestos actually getting outside. What we have in this house is friable insulation on pipes. It's called air cell insulation. Friable means it can be ground to dust using hand pressure. To remove the insulation, you have to use type 3 procedures, and type 3 work being high risk. Um, you put in more procedures than you would in any other to protect the worker better. So we're going to go downstairs, have a look at the lines to set up and make sure that they've done everything they need to do in accordance with the regulation and best practice in the industry. Why would anyone in the world ever want to use asbestos in their homes in the first place? Why is it in this house? Um, it was honestly a, a great product at the time, surprisingly, and, and, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but yeah. it was heat resistant, acid resistant to some extent, and a whole bunch of other things, so. What it is is basically, it's called air cell insulation. Yeah. It's um, kind of a white corrugated paper. And it's typical in homes where they put it on hot water heating lines. Yeah, left alone, the, the asbestos in this house will not be toxic until it's airborne. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can leave asbestos containing materials in your home undisturbed, yeah. and they're entirely fine, but when you disturb it and they become airborne, then it becomes a hazard. Right. Um, with asbestos only being a hazard once it's airborne. Yeah. So uh, if you do have it in your home, just don't disturb it, don't touch it, leave it be. Make sure it's in good condition right. and it can remain. When this comes down, it's going to create a lot of debris on the walls. So they're actually going to use a cleaning solution and a sprayer. It's like basically a paint sprayer, and they just basically spray the walls and wash it down. The debris comes off, it goes right into a bag and right out. So what they're doing is they're containing it in a bag so that there's nothing leaking. We don't want asbestos trailing out as we go. The asbestos and the entire enclosure actually get brought to a toxic waste disposal site. Hey, Jay. Hey, Damon, how you doing? What do you say? We're all done. You're all done? So, how do we do on the air test? Perfect. We came by, did our visual clearance inspection once yeah. the lines was finished. Um, the enclosure was clean, everything had been removed. Uh, we did our air runner and clearance. Yeah. We analyzed three samples, and the results were less than 0.01 fibers per milliliter, which yeah. is the regulated amount. Excellent. So they can tear down the enclosure whenever they're ready. Excellent. That is the best news I've heard. Concentrate on down here. I want to open up as much as possible. I might come in today uh, to show the homeowners exactly what we're getting into before we go any further, okay? So take down all the bulkhead drywall. We got this side. I want to take this down. We're repairing it anyway. I mean, what are we going to do? Patch this, this, that, this. It's this area here. It'll be nicer if we get up one sheet. What a mess. I know there's a plumbing leak right above us. That's where the bathroom is. Right. So instead of going in through the finished bathroom upstairs, of course. I want this open up, okay? I want you to start with maybe just a two by two hole. Everything protected on the floor. Make sure this room is 100% protected before you even start this, okay? So basically I'm trying to locate the uh, joist right now so that we can cut on the center of that joist so that like, we have a nice clean cut and we can still laminate the new piece of drywall when we get to it. Hey, 
Hey, Frank. Hey, Thanks for coming, man. Thank you, buddy. No problem. Look at this. It actually gives me a chance to actually look in the ceilings and see what you think of all the wiring. With the uh, camera that we can end up taking a look at during uh, down all the joysticks. Oh, good and point. And see if we end up seeing any junction points. Yeah, it's not open everywhere. As you can see, the bulkhead all the way down, it goes right to the back of the house. Frank, that's, that's all open. Enough. You can look there. And we have a couple of chases each way, so. That's perfect. OK, we have a panel here, which I'd like you to check out. There's a lot of wiring in here. You tell me if it's overloaded. I don't know. I think it is. But uh, look what's above it. Copper pipe. Copper pipe. And look what they did. They actually, the homeowners did this. They actually insulated it because it was dripping onto the panel itself. All right, so what I'll do is open off the cover and let's see how the wires look in there. Okay. Uh, initially, on, on the walk-in, I clearly noticed that there's brand new switches everywhere. Yep. It looks like a full rewire that's been done yep. in this home. So what I'm going to do is do a quick test and troubleshoot and make sure it's been done properly. Excellent. Well, a couple of key mistakes that are made here, something that is, is a serious no-no, is having two cables under one staple. These staples here are only rated for one wire. The home inspector should have clearly caught double stapling, like without, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt. They should have clearly caught that. That's, that's wide open. You should have also caught this hole that's in here, and that's against code also. You know, all you need is a panel, a knockout filler. Like, why did they catch that? Uh, with respect to inside the panel, it, it looks a little busy, but it's not that bad. The only problem is whoever did do the work, they've used some old uh, used breakers. So this breaker here, these breakers here, they're obviously re refurbished or old uh, breakers that uh, were probably laying around in the guy's shop. And that's against code also. You need to be using brand new. Uh, and if you do want to use refurbished, it has to be approved uh, and recertified again. So you can use refurbished as long as it's been stamped and, and approved by the manufacturer or, or someone that uh, can recertify them. So those are problems that I'm finding right here. This one, these three, and these three definitely right there. So we'll double check and see what's going on and uh, move forward from there. What I want you guys to do is start pulling all this debris. I don't even know what's under here. It looks like an old concrete deck or a slab. I want to know what's underneath all this crap here, OK? Absolutely right, it was a plumbing leak. I think it's a minor one. Look at the damage. Yeah, so they found asbestos all the way through that bulkhead. And have we done anything in here? Yeah, I had Martin look at it today. He's actually gonna remove that pipe. Electrically speaking, a couple of breakers are overloaded, 20 amp yep. over 15. Frank's gonna address that. Exactly. I know what's coming in from yep. here. We need to grade this out to keep it away, yep. a four foot grade. Hey, David. Good How are you? Good to see you. Come on over here. Good to see you. Davey? Dave, okay. how you doing? Good, and you? Good. We'll start out here. Uh, one thing I found out is that oh. this addition is not really a proper addition. Okay. But I'm not taking it down. There's ways I can fix things. Okay. The foundation, where your office is, the foundation yeah. is an old foundation. It's not new, so they just tied on top of it. Okay. So we know it's leaking from rain driving from this direction, west, right against the house, getting in, and it's getting into that one corner. The sand's great. I mean, your earth is great, but not at the house. Because that's just going to allow it to wick right down. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to reslope it. There's just no doubt about that. Rob's coming in tomorrow. He's going to check out uh, all the ventilation around your soffits on both the upper and the uh, the addition here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're actually going to pop in a roof vent as well and change some downspouts. Let's solve the problems that we're, we're seeing and solve it a smart way and not, you know, rip the house down and build you a new one. Right. OK, you don't want to do that, do you? Yes, you do. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually. <laughs> Kind of cool there, Damon. You need your coat? Yeah, I need my coat. <laughs> After you. It's our little tent. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Oh. There's a hole in the ceiling. Yes, I see. Uh, water damage. <laughs> Martin's going to come in, our plumber. He's going to thoroughly inspect it. We are not going to close this up until we know what's linking. It's not that bad. No. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's opened up. There's no doubt about that. Wow. Well, we brought in Alliance uh, Environmental to basically take down everything. They remove all the asbestos. Uh, we then had Pinch had come in and do an air test after they were done. So what they did, they took down everything in the bulkhead because we knew where the lions were chasing. They were obviously in the bulkhead. Right. They had to remove all that. They found asbestos throughout the whole way, throughout the basement, and then it shot off in three different directions oh. for the chases upstairs. Wow. Looks clean. Yeah. Looks we're fabulous. now safe. It's, you're healthy to be in here. So the test was done afterwards, and it, we're clean. We're good. Hearing Mike say that the test was great, and I think that was kind of like, I can now breathe because up until then it was kind of oh I hope everything's okay I hope everything's okay and I said you know I went to the doctors we did all the right tests but 
you just never know. And so to have him say that their quality is great, it just makes me feel so good. We're going to rebulk these, close them all in for you. Um, we'll bring it back to you safe, sound, and the way it was, the way you wanted it to be in the first place when you bought it. That's awesome. With a couple of recommendations that you can do in the future. Okay. I'm so relieved that everything is going to be taken care of, the asbestos is out, and Mike is happy. <laughs> so if Mike's happy, I'm happy. I'll see you when it's done. Yes. Can't wait. <laughs> Keep smiling. And I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> OK. Two things I want to accomplish today, Carl. Yeah, this bulkhead sure. done, drywalled, and I want to fix all these. Because over time, a lot of these have sagged. Some of them stayed true. Look at that. We have a three-quarter inch gap here, right? Wow. We'll do the best we can, right? Try and give them a nice crisp edge, make it look a little bit better down here. Got it? Yeah. Or have it? <laughs> you won't be going to Got it. The lipstick work in this house was like A1, like beautiful finish work. So it just shows you that just because it looks good doesn't mean it's good. I'm going to frame this out for sure, and this will be covered, but I don't know what you want me to do with these pipes. Nothing. Actually, we're going to bring it exactly to where it was before. I don't want to cover these, right, because we have a junction box over there. We have a switch. I have a shutoff valve. We're going to bring it back to exactly where it was, OK? You're going to be as tight to here as possible. So you're just going to notch out your drywall here, bring your framing right above. Yeah. And you're going to follow the beam, right? So the beam is your lowest point. why I want it to rain. You can actually see where water's coming in. We have a downspout in the far corner here leaking onto the concrete pad. The concrete pad is so old, it's actually sloping into the house. The best thing for me, other than the fact that Mike's going to take care of it, is that the air quality test came back that the way they did, because Sandy was really concerned for Caden and herself. And <laughs> For you too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you let me play downstairs. When they did this job, the city wanted all the, the downpipes and the drains. And they've changed their philosophy on that now. They want them all out of the drains because uh, it can't handle all the water now. They came along, pulled out the drain, and just put a kicker pipe. That created a problem because uh, the way the lay of the land was, was uh, putting all the water in the driveway. He's got to lower that trough coming across, eh? In a nutshell, we've got to relevel all, all the, the trough over. and get it over to this side of the house where it's not an issue. Same in the back. They kicked out the pipes right beside the foundation. Hey, Rob, what do you think about the shingles lying in the gutters here? Well, we'll cut them back. Eh? The troughs are all clogged all around. Yeah. Let's put some uh, smart screen gutter protection okay, it absolutely on there. Needs it, right? Solve that. But uh, it's just sloppy work, that's all. Okay, so we'll tackle that. Now we're yep. going to do a vent? Yep. Excellent. I just want to see if there's proper insulation in here. I mean, who knows what they did, right? Oh, well, they did things right here. They look like they have proper insulation. They actually used the Thanks. blue the blue boxes over uh, their pot lights, which is smart. We're good to go. Martin, how you doing? Hey, man, how are you? You doing okay? I'm doing fine. What'd you uh, find? Well, what I've, what I've done is uh, I flushed this toilet a couple of times, and uh, I've got clear evidence of uh, what's been going on for quite some time. Yeah, it's leaking. That staining downstairs so probably is a little bit maybe to do with this. I it's, still think it's the tub, though. It is slightly off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the staining out on, the, on the floor below we have slightly over to the other side. Yeah. Um, but. Um, you know, it's good that we were able to pick this up. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know. This is another reason why we don't cock the bottoms of our toilet. You want the water to actually come out. Otherwise, it's going into your floor and causing damage exactly. everywhere else. You exactly. want to see evidence here. Yeah. 
I'm gonna take the toilet off. I'm yeah. gonna put in a new gasket uh, and make sure this toilet settles properly. Because uh, sometimes you, if the gasket is not put in, the, you know, properly, you're gonna get a you know a little bit of an angle. You make a little bit of a gap. Yeah. The water will start leaking, right? So yeah, because you're relying on that seal to get snug to the toilet, so there's exactly. no water leaking exactly. at all yeah. or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Katie, let's insulate this. I know it's not for sound or anything else. It's for a fire chase, right? If a fire ever gets, uh, you know, starts up in the boiler room, what's it going to want to do? Travel down this way, right? And want to go upstairs. So let's do our job and then just insulate everywhere where, where we can, okay? So the fire can't actually get in here and then we can drywall, okay? All On your mud, I'm gonna get you up in the attic. You know that plumbing we were talking about for the shower head? All right. You know it's exposed to the attic, all right? I'm gonna get you to frame it in. I'm probably gonna get you to drywall it and wrap vapor barrier over it. I wanna bring it to the warm side because right now it's exposed, right? All right. As soon as we give them proper ventilation up there, as soon as we give them proper insulation, that's gonna become a cold area. All right. It's warm right now, it's gonna become cold, so that plumbing's gonna freeze. I need you up there right now. You know what you're gonna do here, right? Yeah. You're basically just gonna frame this in. All righty. We just really have to enclose this, right? It doesn't have this to be fancy. Right? Just bringing it to the warm side is all I want to do. OK, guys, let's go. I'm not going to lie. This is going to suck I can real bad. Go. Come on in. What I want is for you to jackhammer this concrete. Clear off all the dirt off this concrete. Get the concrete out, okay? I want it on plastic out there, so it's no, not messy, okay? Because it is raining. I don't want it running all over the place. Uh, call me when it's done. I think I've tackled the issue up there. What I've done is I siliconed everything. Plus what Martin's done with the toilet and the siliconing around the uh, discussion plates on the wall. So I'm gonna go play in the water upstairs. And I'm gonna catch the water. <laughs> exactly. Good. Okay, let's do a little water test here. Wow, that shower head really pumps it out. Anything yet? Nothing. I'm gonna sh shower this wall. Anything? There's nothing. I wonder if it's getting here and going in. I gotta take this baseboard off. Oh, this is exactly why you do a water test. You find out exactly where it's coming in. Even though we think we've solved it around the tub and the toilet, it's actually coming in at the floor. Let's see if Carl sees anything here. Hey, Carlito. Yeah. Get up nice and close to it. I want I want you to see exactly where it's pouring in. So I can only see like right up against the drop. Ah! You did that on purpose. I knew it, man. Okay, I think I found the problem. Did you see anything? Oh, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> you guys did an unbelievable job, though. Let's get this furnished, because they're on their way. Mike's coming soon. And I want that place done by the time they get here, OK? I got the big stuff. Oh, yeah. Give this one a minute. But this is really heavy. Okay. So here, 
Repeat that. Stand ye. Look how happy you two are. I'm so excited. Are you doing, Jess? Are you doing, David? Nice to see, see you again. You. Hey, hey, Sir Davey. Under here. There we go. Like <laughs> <wood. laughs> Welcome oh, home. Thank you. Damon has been very busy on your house, and uh, it looks good. I'm rather happy. It, it doesn't really look a lot different, but it's amazing the little things that we do that make the difference. I uh, brought in Rob Graves from Better Contracting, and it, rather than doing all new east troughs, what they did was new downspouts, correct? That's right. And they re, re sloped all your east troughs. So we oh. took the water from the front here, put it to the side, the same as the back, and re controlled it. Because what we want to do in the house is make sure that we control the water. A uh, little fix, this is the caulking where the brick meets the concrete, so you stop that flow of water just driving into the house and now control it and make it go down to the back. We want to make sure that we, like I said, control the flow of water. Now you have a tap that you don't have to worry about. This guy won't freeze, so you can leave it on all year. I, lo I love these. This should be minimum code, these things. It's what you want. And obviously, we've closed this off, and this is pretty well for decoration. <laughs> So we pulled up the concrete in the back and regraded it so that it runs away from the house, moved the downspouts that were on the other side, extended them further out because we want to control the water from that side running this way and not allowing the water to get in. You put a roof vent in for you because there was no roof vent. There's not even an access in the back here. So we put a roof vent in for you as well. That's great. Let it breathe up there a little bit. Wow, looks like we weren't even here. Yeah. No, this is great. If anything, it looks better. The stain's gone. What they yes. find? <laughs> what happened was the floor was getting wet running in behind the baseboard and running. It was nothing. Old house is gonna is sloping down a bit, so the water just wanted to run right to the corner where the doorway is, getting behind the baseboard, and then there was a wow. hole from the wall down to this level right here. So it was just running straight onto the drywall. Want to see the basement? Yes, We do. Okay. Let's take a look. Well, it's not like we rearranged everything and made it, uh, uh, you know, all new in the living room, we've moved it. No, we didn't do that. We just actually ripped it apart, fixed it, and put it back together again. Starting with the electrical room. Okay, you can see that the hole is closed off and it's yes. both safe on the inside, it's insulated, and the water pipe has been moved. Very smart to keep that water away from the electrical. We know now that all the asbestos has been removed and uh, it's, you know what, it's all cleaned up. It's all drywalled the way it's supposed to be. I'm a happy man. Damon's a happy man. I'm so happy. I feel so relieved. I can't stop smiling. So <laughs> it's been a really great experience. Mike and the crew, Damon, everyone. Definitely cannot see any asbestos in the, that hole. That That's was the awesome. first indication <laughs> that it was in the house. And it's clean air. That's great. I love yeah. it. Me too. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. We don't have to worry anymore. We can come in and use any part of our house, have people over, we can lounge anywhere we want. I mean, this now can be our family room again. It's fantastic. So this is all back to normal, and once again, we're ducking under your bulkhead. Yeah. <laughs> you guys just don't have an issue with that, now do you? Nope. <laughs> this house was made for you, too. Yes, yes, it was. They've done well beyond our expectations, and they, I mean, they completely exceeded everything we expected. We just thought they would come in and help us with the asbestos, which was the, the core issue. And for them to find a little, all these little things and just kind of help us with them without us having to, you know, ask for it, or it was just been really great. We have a list of minor uh, recommendations that we have for you that you can do yourself, and we're going to go out and help someone else. Wonderful. Thank you so much I for coming in. I hope you love it. We, we feel do. a lot more comfortable. Really Pleasure to meet you, David. No Greatly worries. It was you guys pleasure. are great to work with. Thanks. Let me tell you. No worries. I hope you're happy. Great. How you doing, pal? Give me a picture. Nice. Get a picture of that. Carl, we got you strawberry shortcake. Ah. Ah. Because we know you're really welcome. Thank you. You're all happy. Thank you. Sweet days off. Is it ice cream cake? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs>